right. Thank you, Julie. Welcome, everybody. I'm, I'm hoping you had a wonderful holiday weekend, and we thank you for joining us tonight. We want to keep that holiday feeling going. Uh, before I introduce our wonderful host, just a couple of housekeeping items. As we did last month, you know, we will be muting and unmuting all of you as the show goes on. We want to hear your laughter, but we don't want your laughter to be so loud that the comedians can't hear themselves talk. So just be muting and unmuting. And then also, we'd love to see your faces. You're, you're just a little box, but it's much more fun to see your face than to see just a black screen with your name. So if you're feeling up to showing your face, we would love you to. Um, now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our host, the wonderful Jason Love. Jason is a professional comedian who runs Love and Laughter. It's a, a program that brings live stand-up comedy to cancer support community members. He has appeared on HBO, America's Got Talent, and Dry Bar Comedy. And you can hear him daily on Sirius XM. Please help me welcome the one and only Jason Love. All right. Thank you. What a, I, what a lovely intro. Thank you, Patricia. I wish that you were my therapist. You just, you make, you make me feel at ease. Uh, and thank you, Julie. You guys rock. Uh, thank you to the cancer support community. I love working with these guys and uh, appreciate you all joining us. Some of you turned on your video. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, this is great. I wish that I could see you in person. It's been too long. I mean, it all, it all seems like a simpler time now, doesn't it? That was all, you know, BC, before Corona. So long ago. Can you believe there was a time when teenagers would throw toilet paper over our house? Oh. I'm like, is that two-ply do my backyard? Come on, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like when we go back. Everyone's in a Everyone's rush, in a rush. For, for good reason. I can't blame them, but I don't know. They, at the LAX, it's going to be mandatory to wear a mask. The women of Saudi Arabia are like, ah, oh, poor baby, <laughs> cry as a river. <laughs> yeah, and they're going to have half audiences when we go back. So, uh, but that's perfectly fine by me because that's what I'm used to. Half full. <laughs> capacity audiences yeah the ships you know if you work on a ship as some of the comics do here you don't get like a, a sweet stateroom upstairs you know you're down below with the titanic people and so when you enter the ship it's uh you know they'll shake you down they'll walk it's like joining the military you know they'll walk right into your cabin if they if they want to so I can't imagine what it's going to be like getting on a ship as a crew. Like they're gonna, they're gonna take your temperature the hard way before it's over. The Tiger King is like, I'm in. <laughs> this is good. This is as this is as close as we could come to being together. So uh, that's nice. You know, comedy is meant to be in person you know that's why that's why i went to see dave Chappelle one night at the improv and they took our phones they all of our phones they put them in this envelope that you couldn't open and you don't know how addicted you are to your phone until somebody takes it oh i was just i started to get itchy i'm like swiping coasters <laughs> and then you i started talking to a stranger oh it was horrible <laughs> Next time, I'm bringing a burner phone and getting that one. <laughs> yeah, it's good. But this is nice. This is a good practice for uh, a year from now when we're all holograms. <laughs> I did a Zoom show where they didn't uh, unmute any of the boxes. And uh, I have a cricket that's been here for weeks. And I'm doing jokes with a cricket. <laughs> Comedian's worst nightmare. Right? <laughs> when you wish upon a star, your jokes still die in webinars. <laughs> yeah, Zoom is kind of changing the way we do everything, isn't it? It's changing the way we our language. I I've started to refer to children as ambient noise. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. It's good. It's the whole thing has kind of been like a, a lesson in government, hasn't it? Like I always thought, being naive, that the government, like in Washington D.C., there was a law, and then that would come down, and we'd all follow it, and that's how it worked. But oh no, you got a governor who's got their own laws, and then you got the county; they do what they want. I, I feel like I met Best Buy looking for a grown-up. Can I? <laughs> anybody in charge here? <laughs> I'm the senior manager, sir. I've been here for six months. <laughs> I am um, in confinement with my wife and my mother-in-law. Beat oh. that. <laughs> yeah, she's great. She's uh, She is pretty low maintenance. She's up there in years. So she watches like uh, she loves family feud and she's got those TV listeners in. And so every time I walk by, I'm trying to figure out what's happening on family feud. I can't hear it. And I can't really read Steve Harvey's lips, but I'm, I'm starting to be able to read his mustache. <laughs> it's got a life of its own, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like a caterpillar. Who are you? <laughs> and then she watches Wheel of Fortune and first of all, Wheel of Fortune still on? Wow, okay. <laughs> and here's the thing, they have Vanna White flipping letters. I mean, what deal with the devil did this woman make? I mean, those letters definitely don't need her touching them. To <laughs> I don't know, we talk about how technology's taken jobs and here's Vanna White like pretending to turn over letters. Oh. <laughs> It's like someone at the bowling alley pretending to put up pins after every roll of the <laughs> So yeah, we're just trying, my wife and I, we're just trying to be romantic, but it's tough when you can't go out and, you know, and do anything. And I'm, I'm the one who's always pitching the romantic ideas, you know, I'll, I'll pitch like, uh, you know, a beach picnic or whatever. And Patty, my wife, she's more like the dude. <laughs> like like the universe is trying to correct itself like trying to balance itself out and so i'll say something sometimes too sweet and she'll be like Psh, give me a break <laughs> she shames me there was a night i went through the trouble of putting together a bath with the enya and the candles and the yeah patty was out of town so oh my big chance oh. getting it in a little me time <laughs> she, when when the whole world gets back online together, she wants to go you hot air ballooning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about the hot air ballooning. You ever have you ever seen a hot air balloon in person? Uh, it doesn't look right when they're doing it right. It's just you know, <laughs> oh how romantic! <laughs> it's a giant balloon with an open flame. <laughs> in a picnic basket full of people. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> I don't know, a breeze? A 10-year-old with a, with a drone? Do the math, come on. <laughs> yeah, the last thing we did before this whole thing went down is we went wine tasting. And I'm totally cool with wine drinking, but when you get into the the poetic faces and the, you know, <laughs> oh, this is like smoky herbal dusk. Oh, really? <coughs> it it tastes like true. dusk. I'm on my, my fifth glass going, mine tastes like purple. <laughs> 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 and then we did charades. We're trying to, trying to keep it, you know, not just be in front of the TV all the time, like it's 1950 all over again. And here, <laughs> Patty's got this great approach to charades. She gives you one clue, and then if you don't get it, she tries to transmit the word telepathically. <laughs> so she gave me this. This is all I got. And I go, waves. She goes, <laughs> I go, I, uh, ocean? <laughs> like, I don't know. Charlie Manson, you're scaring me. <laughs> all right. Let's do, uh, let's do one other thing. I've been playing the guitar a lot, like, prison or something so <laughs> why don't we play a little thing on the guitar um when you know when i work on cruise ships everybody's into country music every time i ask the audience country is the thing and so i have a country uh contribution this is a true story about a guy who moved to la and what la does to you it, it turns you into me mm -hmm. <laughs> 
to L.A., but he used to ride in a saddle. He swears he ain't changed, but they say he's losing the battle. He's been reading about how yoga is good for the mind. Shopping at Sprouts when the stars align. It's been ten long years since he's line dance. He won't drink beers, but he recycles the cans. He's gone crunchy. All veggies and fruit. He's gone crunchy. Drives a Prius to boot. He's gone crunchy. <laughs> gone crunchy. All right. Well, thank you, guys. That's my little warm-up session. I hope the other comics can. Uh, uh, oh, you can you can hear everybody. The sounds good for everyone. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Excellent. All right. Well, I would like to bring to the virtual stage your next comedian. She is super funny. She performs at uh, con uh, comedy clubs and uh, colleges around the country. She was on Laughs on Fox. Put your hands together for Cat Alvarado. I'm here, so excited, so excited. Um, you can't tell by looking at me, I am Latina, I'm Latina. I tried being friends with the Mexican kids growing up, because that's what we have here, and they were always like, no girl, you're white, and be like, no, I'm Nicaraguan, and they stopped making up country. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a tough culture being Nicaraguan. It really is. Like I uh, I told my cousins I wanted to be a vegan, and they made me kill a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even the worst one. The worst one was when my aunt bought me this pet armadillo. Oh, I said that wrong. I got me dinner. Is <laughs> 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 that I don't know following the news lately, but Nicaragua just got a dictator, you guys. It's so exciting. <laughs> uh, four months ago, he was the president. They grow up so fast. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, but people don't really know a lot about Latin American politics. Um, people are usually only familiar with the countries they've ziplined in. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. Costa Rica. <laughs> that <one>. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you stand in the southern part of Nicaragua and look towards Costa Rica, you can see the democracy <coughs> from there. <laughs> um, yeah, people don't know a lot. The other day, a girl actually said this to me. It's so sad that Fidel Castro died because he gave everybody free health care. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. Because <laughs> Cuba was so bad under Fidel Castro that Cubans would leave their island paradise on a two by four and Ooh. floating through shark infested waters to move to Florida, you guys. That's uh, <laughs> a long way to go for the worst state. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the only state you can. You can go to the happiest place on earth and still get eaten by an alligator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's not a state. That's a crappy Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've been single a long time, uh, like seven years. Uh, you ever single so long that you watch all of the forensic files? <laughs> <laughs> They're getting to my head too. They affect how I date. I have rules now. Yeah. <laughs> like I always go for dad bod. Stay away from ab. Why? Yeah. 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 All poor. <laughs> it's a dark thought, but when you watch enough Dateline, you get it. Um, rule number two. Don't date anyone who runs marathons. Why? You can't outrun that. <laughs> oh, good. On the first date, I take a guy up a few flights of stairs. If he's out of breath, that's a keeper. 
Sometimes I get sad that I have a hard time and I've been single for so long. Um, but I even find inspiration in forensic files. Uh, I do, I do. John Wayne Gacy, that's the killer clown who inspired it. He got married three, three times. Mm. Yeah, if he can find love, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't just a serial killer. He was a man who openly dressed up as a clown for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the creepy clown murderer found love. Oh, gosh, uh, I think though, you know, there, there's someone for everyone, but you have to have the confidence to wait for the right person. I don't want to end up like one of those women who ends up murder, who ends up marrying the guys in prison. <laughs> that is crazy. Like what about lady who married 10 Buddy? She's like, he was convicted of murdering 20 women, but he says he's innocent. And at least if he kills me, I won't die alone. <laughs> this man dresses like a creepy clown murderer and spends time burying large objects under the house. But you know what? My eggs aren't getting younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to stay positive. You know what, the other day I actually walked in on two homeless people doing it in a parking lot. So, like I said, there's someone for everyone. And you know, if they're doing it on concrete, the love is real. <laughs> <laughs> At one point I was questioning whether I'm even attracted to men. Uh, that was... That was something. But then I thought about it more and I'm like, are any of us attracted to men? <laughs> <laughs> if we're honest, are we? <laughs> uh, no, men, men are great. But I was, I was wondering. So I went on a date with a, uh, well, I set Tinder to women seeking women. And turns out that's how you meet couples. <laughs> 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 yeah, a lot of folks out there trying to spice things up. And no, one, <laughs> no one's trying to share a hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's it's always some girl who's like, This is Steve, he's really nice, he has a mutual fund. <laughs> Also, I'm tired. Can you take a shift? I'm tired of faking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. No, I, I finally did. Uh, I did set up a date with a woman. It was nice. Um, she was a great listener. Uh, but then I had to talk and I went, oh gosh, there's not time for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of talking. <laughs> um, was that the light? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh no, this was me stretching. <laughs> but I did get the light. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Like what? Okay. You're like an hour ago. You got. The no, no, no. <laughs> I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up. My last joke. Um, you want one cottage cheese or two? <laughs> <laughs> two. Two. Definitely. <laughs> Oh my God, uh, I'm jealous. I'm jealous, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous of uh, lesbian women because they get to relax more. You know, they don't have to do all this contouring. Well, I wish I could relax like that. And for those of you who don't know what contouring is, that's when a woman uses makeup to make it look like she's got high cheekbones, small nose, Puerto Rican parents. <laughs> that's another country, by the way. Gotcha. It's not. That's our country, you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Cat Alvarado. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So for the other comedians, um, when my video pops up, that's the light. And also, if you get that echo, you can plug your headphones into your computer or your iPad, and that should, in theory, make that go away. In theory. Okay. Your okay. next comedian, she is also super funny. Um, I've worked with her a lot. She's been on the Late Late Show. She's been on Conan. Put your hands together for 
Mary Gallagher. Woo! Hi, Woo! thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. Hi, guys. Welcome. I was going to do this in my bedroom, but I just didn't want to get comfortable with people laughing at me there. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> um, I'm so glad to see you guys tonight. I'm not really thinking of this as a show. I'm thinking of it more as a date. <laughs> and um, I hope I look okay. Um, I hope my hair looks okay. If it doesn't, it's certainly not because I did not put forth the effort. <laughs> Ladies will understand this. Uh, I started out with the flat iron. Then I moved to the curling iron. Then I hit myself in the head with a nine iron. <laughs> because I was done. <laughs> Our hair is never really done, right? It, it's never done. You could catch a woman walking right out of a salon and say something like, hey, your hair looks great. And she'll say, thank you. I'm actually growing my bangs out. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to highlight this. Back here, we're waiting on a piece from Spain. <laughs> I'm very inspired by you guys. Um, I myself could never get cancer because my mom would say I'm making it all about me. <laughs> I, am, uh, I am in a long-term relationship, though, with Citibank Visa. <laughs> they are so committed to me, you guys. They call me all the time. <laughs> I finally had to tell them, hey, look, I am seeing other credit cards. <laughs> Did you guys know that it costs about $4,000 to declare bankruptcy? And they don't take credit cards. <laughs> So, you guys, you know that movie that came out last year, What Men Want? Um, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what genre that movie was, but I know it wasn't a mystery. <laughs> I love doing stand-up. I also get to work as an actor. I get cast a lot as the girl next door type. This one guy is like, you are so girl next door. You're such the girl next door. I said, Chuck, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> you mow the lawn on Sundays. Could you please put on a shirt? <laughs> Great bra. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, uh, I'm also from Wisconsin, um, but I had to leave because I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I used to go to football games. All the kids had cheese on their head. I had permits. <laughs> so I left my battle with dairy behind and came to LA to enlist in the war on gluten. <laughs> Both my parents are former United States Marines. My parents really love this country, just none of the people in it. <laughs> My parents were actually living with me for a while in Hollywood, but then my father said, I'm sorry, Mary, your mother and I have to move back to the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> my parents, uh, they actually met in the military. Um, let's see, how does the story go? She gave him a spit shine, he bounced a quarter off her ass. I don't really like knowing the details. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel kind of funny. But, um... My parents are pretty strict. Um, when I was growing up, my mom used to make me clean the bathroom floor with a toothbrush. So I used hers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I was in the hospital having my daughter, we told my father that we were naming her Mia. That's M-I-A. He just <laughs> kind of shuddered and walked away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recently, my mom admitted to me growing up I was not her favorite. That's always hard, isn't it? Especially if you're an only child. <laughs> um, I have just one child uh, because of that law in China. It's important to follow international law. And um, if I have another child, again, I'm going to adopt because I really want to make a difference, you know? 
my daughter says, why not try cooking dinner, mom? That'll make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> when I had my daughter in the hospital, the doctor said I should have a lot of skin to skin contact. He said that it would build confidence, but I don't know about that. I had a lot of skin to skin contact in college. My confidence was at an all time low. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my daughter up on Sesame Street. You guys like Sesame Street, like old school? <laughs> yes. Oh, I love Sesame Street so much. I think there should be a Sesame Street for adults, and we should kind of continue that great education into adulthood, you know? And the show would be on late at night when drunk people come home from the bar, <laughs> and you turn it on, and it would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, step program. <laughs> this show is brought to you by letters D, U, and I. <laughs> My daughter and I, we have a lot of fun together. Um, when she was little, we used to do a lot of play acting. Like, we would put on a whole production of Cinderella, and I would have her mop all the floors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried on shoes. <laughs> And then we used to play Frozen. Do you guys ever do that? That's where I have her make me a margarita. <laughs> <laughs> I really love being mom. I love everything about it, except maybe for the word mom. I don't know. Just that word doesn't look or sound very skinny. <laughs> I mean, just look at that word on paper, you guys. It looks like it was made up of some sort of pudgy hieroglyphics. <laughs> you know, I'm made up of two giant double mountains, and in the middle of me is a donut. <laughs> My daughter's 14 now, and um, sometimes when we're together, people say that we look like sisters. That's such a compliment to me, but it's kind of a flame to her. <laughs> she, um, she breaks a few things, you know, and then I always go and fix it and she never says a word. And it's not like I want to thank you or anything, but I'm just wondering, does she think things regenerate themselves with the laser? <laughs> my, daughter, um, my daughter and I are doing pretty good with the social distancing, you know? She likes to keep six feet between us and two closed doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I am a single parent. Um, I think I, I don't mind being a single parent. I'll tell you what the hard part is. The hard part is sometimes not only am I the mom, I got to be the father too. You know, like I'll give you an example. I work all day on the computer and then I make dinner. And then after she goes to bed, no matter how tired I am, I have to get on the internet and look at porn. <laughs> what we do. <laughs> um, my ex is a narcissist. Uh, I left him three years ago, and I still don't think that he noticed. <laughs> um, I left my marriage because I didn't like the way my former husband was speaking to me. Um, so I'm also currently leaving the cashier at Marshall's <laughs> and that rude lady at the DMV. <laughs> um, is it weird to say that now that I'm single, all these guys are hitting on me? And is it even more weird that I just made that up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to call my former husband my ex. I'd much rather just call him my former husband because I feel like that makes it sound more like he was impeached. You know, <laughs> like formal hearings started a couple of years ago. Two thirds of the house voted, you're out. <laughs> for the time, you guys, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Gallagher, everybody. Great job, yes. Mary. Yes. And um, I just turned, I just plugged in my own headphones. So not only does it kind of um, make you your mic better, but it actually made it easier for me to hear you. I couldn't hear all of it, Mary, but um, so just as an FYI, but super funny. Um, great job. I'll work uh, on that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not, we're all just figuring it out. But I really appreciate you and Kat and the other comics for doing this in the first place. Can we give a little love to the comics? Yay! Yay! They're fantastic. 
All right. Well, your next comedian is up late. Well, I guess not that late. It's he's in New York. It's nine thirty. <laughs> not late for a comic. But uh, I, I've been. Uh, I, I love this guy. He's been on everything. He's been on Jimmy Kimmel Live, Conan, Letterman, Last Comic Standing, Sirius XM. How about a warm welcome for Moody McCarthy? Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, guys. Bear with me, I'm up very, very late, 9.30. <laughs> the streetlights came on an hour ago. My parents are going to kill me. <laughs> Hope everyone's having a safe quarantine. Uh, I'm at home in New York. A little weird in the house because my, my wife is working from home. And she says, because it's a workplace now that um, we have to keep our romance on the down low. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have exciting news for everybody. I'm working on a vaccine, so. <laughs> so far, so far, so good. It's Pop Rocks and Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking it for two and a half months. I feel we're going phase two, everybody, phase two. <laughs> there have been some upsides to the quarantine. My, I have little daughters and they're homeschooling. And uh, now, <clears throat> after only two and a half, I'll have a drink, that sounds good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what was that someone asked for one or two uh cottage cheese cottage cheeses yeah i'll take a third if, but don't go out of your way but i'll take a cottage cheese don't go out of your way <laughs> but uh yeah my daughters have been homeschooling for two months now they're five and four years old but already they're uh licensed real so that's pretty exciting <laughs> Even though they're enter they're entering at a low market, but I think by the time they're eight or nine years old, they'll be doing pretty good. <laughs> we live in New York City. I live in. A, I'm not from New York City. I moved there. I moved to New York City because that city has so much energy. And then I learned the city gets its energy by sucking it out of the people that live there. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is from there. We've been, I did it all late. I'm a, I'm a, a family man, but I, I did it late. I didn't get married until I was 45 years old. And I'm glad I waited because, you know, young people, all they care about is looks. But as you mature, you look for a soulmate with money. <laughs> <laughs> we're a good couple. I think we're a good couple. Hey, we were at a, this is um, a couple months ago. We were at a party. Does everyone remember parties? Do you remember parties? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be every setup of mine today. Do you remember restaurants? Remember restaurants? <laughs> remember people? Do you remember people? <laughs> so we were at a party a couple months ago, and my wife, I overheard her tell someone that I'm a good father. Mm. I go, hon, how'd that come up? She goes, Oh, he asked how your career is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually with my parents right now, um, uh, just outside of town. I'm from a... That's not them. <laughs> but I'm from a big family. I got three brothers and three sisters, and uh, my father's warming up to us now, which is exciting. <laughs> Growing up, he didn't want seven kids. We can prove it. We used to go on those field trips in school, and we give our dad the permission slip, you know? It's got that question, in case of an emergency, my dad would write, do not resuscitate. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like Mary's parents, my, my father is also uh, was in the Marines. I, 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 normally I say former Marine, but Marines, you're not supposed to phrase it like that. Marines say once a Marine, always a Marine. And I love that sentiment, but um, it does lead to a lot of disappointment if I tell someone, hey, my father's a Marine. They go, whoa, where is he stationed? I know he's, he's stationed at a dining room table <laughs> in upstate New York. He's currently defending his crossword puzzle from my mom. <laughs> now, my wife's an only child from Manhattan, from New York City. So early in our courtship, she was very interested in the logistics of a large family. And she would ask me, she'd go, all right, when your whole family gets together, who cooks? I go, hon, here's the situation. I go, uh, both my parents are Irish, and Irish parents, they have a lot of kids. And then they pray that one of those kids marries an Italian. 
It's the Irish meal plan right there. Somebody marry an Italian. So my wife, um, we bicker about picking a restaurant. Which Do you remember restaurants? Everyone remembers restaurants? From the 1900s. <laughs> yeah, my wife, she's one of, she likes to overthink the restaurant choice, you know? She'd ask me, she goes, what do you want for dinner? I go, hey, let's get some Thai food. Here's my wife. No, I can't have Thai food today. I had Thai food yesterday. <laughs> I go, well, people in Thailand handle that really well. <laughs> Everything's organic in our place. We have organic peanut butter. <laughs> I can't believe that stuff is heinous. <laughs> I think everyone's had it. If you haven't had organic peanut butter, you can make it. Um, just get out your regular peanut butter. Just get your regular peanut butter, okay? And then pour oil on top of it. <laughs> get a lot on the outside of the jar. Get it on the outside of the jar. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take a shower every time you handle this crud. <laughs> and um, then set it down. And then somehow remove all the peanut butter flavor. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> then here's the final step. Take a $10 bill and throw that in the garbage. Okay. <laughs> so what else is going on? I don't do any political jokes anymore. Um, here's my experience. When you start comedy, um, Everyone tells you, don't do political jokes because only 50% of the audience is going to like your joke. Mm -hmm. You go, okay, that's good advice. But then you do comedy for like a year, two years. You go, hey, hang on, 50%. <laughs> I can close with that. <laughs> well, then, so then you try some, but you, you don't get 50% because... 50% of the country, they don't even vote, so they don't want to hear your joke. And then you're splitting it, then you're splitting it again, so you got a 25% ceiling on your little joke. <laughs> but here's, well, I won't do that joke. I won't do that. <laughs> Our president's taking, do you think he's taking hydroxychloroquine? Or I think he thinks he's taking it. I think his doctor is giving him a vitamins chewable every night. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the harm? <laughs> oh man, so I'm a big sports fan. Do you guys remember sports? Do you remember sports? <laughs> big sports fan. I like a good nickname, right? So uh, most of uh, Jason, most of you guys are in LA. You got some good nicknames out there, Dodgers, right? Uh, you know, because I hate when teams are the Tigers. That bothers me. We're the Tigers. First of all, like, there's too many teams are named Tigers because like my element, half the elementary schools are Tigers. Second of all, that's a real animal that doesn't live here. We don't have tigers in North America. If we're going to be a real animal, it should be local. I think more teams should be the deer. Right? <laughs> Not a deer. And it'd be a good mascot. Halftime of the basketball game, two people in a deer costume. They walk out to center court. <laughs> that's a deer. They walk out to center court. Out of nowhere, a Ford 150. <laughs> 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 Here's the inspirational part. Then the deer hops up and runs away like nothing happened. And the truck has got five thousand dollars front end collision damage. <laughs> and the deer beat the skunks by twenty. <laughs> so we're all disappointed. No Olympics this year. That was a bummer. I love the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they could have had the fencing. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're wearing a mask. They're like six feet apart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they got no fans. It would have been perfect. <laughs> I love the Olympics. The Olympics always remind me what a dumb American I am. I'm so bad with other countries' flags. I can't keep, it's a blur. Like, I, I know Canada and Ireland, and that's about it. But I'll watch anything. I was watching the, the last Winter Olympics, cross-country skiing. All right. And I, I'm a fan, you know, I, I got to root. I, I'm trying to root for somebody. There's no American in the front pack. I go, hey, I got to root for somebody. I go, whoa, here we go. I'm rooting for the guy from the Red Cross. 
<laughs> I go, hon, get in here. This guy, this medic, <laughs> pulling away from everybody. <laughs> and the guy in second place is from the Blue Cross. He's going to handle all the billing and paperwork. <laughs> Was that Switzerland and Finland, you dope? <laughs> Way to ruin a feel-good story of the year, hun. Hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> so, what else is going on? I'm getting old. I'm I'm in my uh, 50s now, and here's the thing: as you get older, um, you get these cliched pep talks. Like um, you get this one: people go, "Oh, life begins at 50." So, uh, I go, no, you, I think you, you're thinking of colonoscopies. <laughs> <laughs> they begin at 50. I like young people, though. I do like young people. I like the next generation. They are a little sensitive. Um, uh, they share their personal stuff. That's, that's what I'm not used to. When my young friends ask me for personal advice, it's a disaster. Right? Here's my friends like, uh, hey, I went on three dates with this woman, and I can't get a hold of her. What do you think? I go, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to get in touch? No, no, I wouldn't worry about it because it's not my problem. That's why I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you handle that and keep it to yourself <laughs> like we did in the 1900s? A lot of empathy. They got a lot of their, I like the young people. So, um, what else is going on? So, food, yeah. I got the opposite problems of everyone else in like, the quarantine. A lot of these people are like bored now. They're they're having martinis and watching Netflix. That was my old life. <laughs> I'm, I'm homeschooling these two kids. People, you know, people. I, I shouldn't complain, but people got to worry about their resources. And everything. My wife's got a good job. I don't know what she does, but we got HBO. So, <laughs> and we got a ton of food. She's. <laughs> I'm going to get hurt during the quarantine tripping on food going to the basement. That's what's going to take me out, <laughs> not the virus. <laughs> and then everyone's got to stay six feet apart. And uh, I'm from a big uh, Catholic family, so that's never been a problem. We ignore everybody. <laughs> I'm, kinda, I'm like built for this. But um, yeah, the food, the restaurants. And my wife's getting crazy. She's, uh, she's always um, tinkering. She'll get on the internet. Here's what she told me one time. She goes, hey, we're not supposed to be drinking milk as adults because we're the only species that does that. I go, hon, we're the only species that can milk cows. That's part of the... <laughs> <laughs> like uh, squirrels and uh, woodchucks. They would have ice cream every night <laughs> if it was an option. <laughs> well, we're the only species making eggplant parmesan too and that's just off, <laughs> off the top of my head <laughs> like, we're from slightly different backgrounds I, I thought my wife was Irish because we, we met on the internet I met my wife on the internet and um, Jason I lost track of time Jason sorry about that but that's all right man great 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 um, yeah, we met 11 years ago. On, I, can't, I can't believe we're still together because she returns everything she gets online. <laughs> I'm the only thing she kept from the web. <laughs> we, did, we did meet on the internet. Uh, we didn't know how our parents would react to that, so we told them we met at the University of Phoenix. <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Once in a while, I throw in a joke. Once in a while. <laughs> I really thought her, I thought she was Irish, my wife, because her name is Molly, and uh, turns out turns out that's a nickname. Her real name is Ecstasy. How about that joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, but her name is Molly. But my wife is Jewish. My my wife is her name is Molly, and she's Jewish. Now I had no Jewish friends growing up. My neighbor, I didn't know anything about the Jewish culture, but I'm learning on now, obviously. And I have found with any culture, religion, more similarities than there are differences. Right. Jewish holiday, Yom Kippur. I remember asking my wife, I go, how do Jewish people celebrate Yom Kippur? And she said, we don't eat. I go, I go that's identical to a holiday in my culture, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of St. Patrick's Day, I got, I got let off the hook by the quarantine because last year, my older daughter was in pre-K 
and it was mid-March, and then her teacher says to me, she goes, uh, she goes, hey, McCarthy, you're, you're Irish, right, McCarthy? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm American Irish. She goes, great, come in and talk to the class about St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> so, four-year-olds, I had to go talk. <laughs> I told them, I go, hey, kids, St. Patrick's Day is a holiday when a lot of grown-ups act like you. <laughs> Instead of going to bed when they should, they want more juice. <laughs> I don't want to brag about my kids too much, but um, that was last year. And my daughter, I'm happy to say, did graduate from pre-K. We had a cap and gown, the big ceremony. <laughs> and, then, and then last summer, she backpacked through Europe all by herself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's in kindergarten now. But, you know, thank God. She was talking about taking a gap year. <laughs> you guys have been a ton of fun. I, 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 oh. lost track of time. I had a blast hanging out with you. And everyone else was great, too. You guys were doing a great job. Nope. <laughs> thank you, Moody. Oh, that was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Moody McCarthy, everybody. Moody McCarthy. Great job, man. Thanks, man. All right. So we have one more comedian for you. Um, just an embarrassment of riches tonight. Uh, this guy, he's, he's been on The View. He's been on The Tonight Show. He's been on Comedy Central a bunch of times. He is a veteran uh, right after Memorial Day. He's been in the Air Force four years. Put your hands, oh, he's Princess Cruise Line's Entertainer of the Year. Forgot that. Put your hands together for Carlos Oscar. Hello, can you see me, people? I got I to tell you, can you hear me? Because you never know with this whole, you know, this whole tech. By the way, I got to apologize. I didn't know if I was going to be on with the whole glitches. It's uh, so, because my, my neighbor keeps on changing the password for the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming a real problem. I go, I'm, I'm trying to do something, bro. I don't care about your router. Okay, so. <laughs> I have to, you know, by the way, my last, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me say this, because I always, get to, I always get this, okay? My last name is Oscar. And they go, oh, what kind of last name is that? Uh, okay, listen, okay? And I have that look. People never know where I'm from. You know, I'm going to give you a hint where I'm from. People always, they don't know. They go, are you Armenian? Are you Greek? Oh my, let me give you a hint. Let me give you a hint where I'm from. I'm from a little island, a little island full of Puerto Ricans. <laughs> Manhattan. Okay. No. Harlem. Any Spanish Harlem. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And uh, I got, I, okay, listen, we're stuck in this quarantine. I got, you know what? I shouldn't say this, okay? Because it's, no, no this is kind of sad. Mm -hmm. This is, okay, I'm in quarantine. And our, our, my anniversary, my anniversary is on June 3rd. Oh, isn't that messed up? This is how we spent our, our anniversary. Ooh, okay. Our 25th anniversary. How about them apples, Aww. right? I know. We were supposed to go to, we were supposed to go to Europe, right? And he, you know how we spent our anniversary? We spent, we, we binge watched uh, Tiger King and ordered a <laughs> pizza. pizza. By the way, the commercial for that contactless pizza, I take issues with it, okay? Because they say, yes, I do take issues. Because they come and they say, we promise you, once it's out of the oven, nobody's hands will touch it. Well, shouldn't that have been the policy the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> they gather all the employees and the manager says, uh, listen, headquarters just call. We can't play with the cheese anymore. <laughs> put, the cheese. Put, the pe put the pepperoni down. Alex, put the pepperoni down. No, we can't touch it anymore. Okay, so... And so I know it's a 25th, this is something, and there's, and we watch a lot of TV. By the way, there's too much TV. There's too much TV. You'll never catch up to it. Uh, never, okay? <laughs> All, and I tell you what, let me tell you people, there is a show, and that was reality. Ooh, whoa, that's not, nothing of it, it's real. Anyway, so my mother, all women at my house, by the way, just so you know, okay? All women, mm -hmm. two daughters, my wife, my mother-in-law. Oh, whoa. okay, so, all right, so, yeah, I'm the winner, ding dong. All right. So. <laughs> no, no, that's, not, that's like a, a Latino thing. It is. Go, go to a convalescent home. You don't see any old Latinos in there because we keep them. We keep them. Anyway, <laughs> like, anyway so, so. <laughs> and my mother, I'm Puerto Rican. My in-laws are Mexicans or this whole Mexican Rican vibe. Okay, so <laughs> this whole, but the, by the, can I tell you something? Look, I'm going to interrupt myself. My mother-in-law, <laughs> my mother-in-law would always make us do the, 
for the birthday, the the piñata, the piñata. Mm-hmm. So you guys are okay. All right. Now let me let me let me clarify something. Everybody in America is doing the piñata. That's like the most dangerous tradition to adopt <laughs> of the Latino culture. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it is. You <laughs> let me tell you how it works. Let me tell you how it works. You start by blindfolding the child, like a hostage situation. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. You know. Then once the kid is blindfolded, you spin the kid around. You know, so all his motor skills are gone. Right. <laughs> and then you're the, and then you're the adult. You're the adult. Give him a stick. Give him a stick. Give him a stick. Give him a stick. Right? <laughs> and honestly, there is no piñata stick, right? There isn't. You know who you are. You give the kid a bat, a bat. <laughs> right? And not even aluminum or wood, this new composite, this $300 DMV. Right? And look, everybody in America is doing the piñata. Please listen to me. Listen to me. You're supposed to do it the right way. Listen to me. Listen to me, okay? You're supposed to. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Go by the size of go by the size of the kid. Don't go by the age, okay? Because if you go, oh, if you go by the age. There's always a kid that's really big for his age. I've had these parties my whole life. Mm-hmm. You always have that one kid. I'm gonna say it. I mean, if you get upset, you get upset. There's that one kid, Joselito. He's big for his age, right? <laughs> five, five two, five two, two sixty in second grade. What's going on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a meatball with with Nikes. Anyway, so. <laughs> He starts swinging, he starts swinging and swinging the bat. And then these other kids, do, the, do kids not have like, like critical thinking skills anymore? They're looking at the piñata because it's full of can- Don't they understand? <laughs> Joselito can't see it. And they're like, they can't wait to jump in. And let me tell you another thing, people, okay? Let me tell you the truth. No, I'm going to break it down for you. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you. These kids don't understand. I'm about to burst the bubble of if some kids watching. Listen to me. There is no good candy in the piñata. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. So true. I, no, there isn't. No, they're not my kids. They're my daughter's classmates. What do I care, right? I give my daughters, I give my daughters a good candy when the party's over. Here's the Jared Ellis. I put whatever in the piñata. I put whatever. Yes, I put whatever's left here from last year's Halloween. I don't know. I, put, I put expired medications. Expired medications. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. One, yes, one kid got a Xanax, and he, 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 he like that, right? And he, and he, and the, he was in the corner, like, like eh. And his mom, what happened? I go, oh, it's the sun, it's the sun. Anyway, so, right? So, I don't know if my homeowner's insurance covers it. So, <laughs> so here's the, bu- no, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to be real, I'm being really honest with you, man. I'm going to give you the low down, this is the insider stuff. The most dangerous, the most dangerous part of the piñata, oh my goodness. Someone's got to go on top of the house to hold the string <laughs> yes. so that the piñata doesn't break right away, right? Right. And everybody, everybody in America is doing the piñata. And let me tell you, it's always that one uncle, because I wouldn't go up there on a 45, <laughs> it rained the day before, it's all slick. Anyway, so everybody in America does the piñata, and there's always that one uncle. He goes on the roof, and there's the wife crying. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to kill yourself. And he's yelling, guys, callense aquí, yo mando, callense. Yo sé lo que estoy haciendo con la piñata. And he's black. He knows perfect Spanish. Why <laughs> he's doing the piñata? Right? <laughs> oh. The piñata. By the way, these kids are good. Yeah, am I, is it just me? But the oh, kids are lazy. Right? They're lazy, right? They call them Gen Z. Gen, Gen lazy, really. So, they, they, even, can, even candies make them lazy. If you know, have, yes, yes, they, yes, they do. Have you seen the new lollipops? The new lollipops, you press a button and it spins for you. How lazy is that? <laughs> don't ha- I don't have time to lick it. Are you gonna finish it? No, the battery ran out. The battery ran out. <laughs> Putting on a, a USB. I still got three gigabytes left. Oh, <laughs> oh this. No, this high tech is getting to me. This high. I'll tell you what. My daughters are older now, but when they were little. Okay, this is a true. This is a true story. Okay, listen, listen. Okay, so when they were little, I bought them. Oh my! That's when tech was changing the game. I bought them a Barbie doll cash register. Okay, 
and it had a micro a microphone with the, with the little thing for the for the oh it even had the, the cash register and it had the thing for the credit card the zippy thing the zippy okay so so the, at the time they were three and five they're like babies okay I come in and they combined it with their play school kitchen listen to me you know what they played Starbucks Star Starbucks and they <laughs> yes and they knew the lingo the little one would look at me in the microphone. Ronde Mocha, no way, pick up Carlos. Pick up Carlos, right? <laughs> your father, Car pick up Carlos. <laughs> and then your daddy, you want to play along. So I go, yeah, okay, how much is it? And she says, $18.50. $18.50. For one, for one Ronde Mocha, one. Said, no, no, they, don't, they don't cost that. I'm real New York, they don't cost that much. It's $18.50. And I, look, I got, you know, Tough love. I'm sorry. Puerto Rican, I'm tough love. I went right up to her. I said, and I know she's three. And I said to her, they don't cost $18.50. And she backed up. She backed up. Talked to her sister. She's uh, the manager. She's six. Anyway, whatever. So she comes. They, let me tell you, these kids, they talked for a millisecond. She comes back at me on the microphone. This Starbucks at an airport, $18.50. <laughs> right? And then... She got me, man. Anyway, I give her, no, that's not funny, okay? I give her the credit card. I give her the credit card. She slid it and she goes, this one got declined, sir. Do you have another one? That's what she told me. Oh, I'm sick of it. <laughs> kids are making, no, it's not funny. It's not funny, you know? My whole family's driving me bananas, man. Can I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something because, oh my, and girls, oh, they like, they like stuff. Okay, I'm going to say this. I have daughters. I don't have sons. But daughters are more expensive than sons. They are. They are, right? Because mm -hmm. then they, they grow up and need hair things and accessories and they get older. They get invited to the prom. My daughters got invited to three prom, four proms, all these prom dresses, 600, 800 for the dress, gonna use one time, you know? <laughs> they get invited to the, you got pretty daughters, they get invited to the prom. You have ugly daughters, you're okay. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> This boy, boy, and they come back from sleepovers. I remember that when they were little. And they want these, this, that, the hair, and like some <laughs> accessories and jewelry, clothes. I go, why do you want? Uh, I tried it on at Emily's. Why are you trying on other kids' clothes? Okay? <laughs> Boys don't do that. Boys don't, work with <laughs> Boys, don't. Boys don't go to a sleepover. Hey, Chad, can I try on your jeans? <laughs> what is that? Are these slim fit? I'm gonna tell my dad. These are. Cool. <laughs> this is. Oh, I'm I'm losing it, man. I'm losing it. I'm losing. It. And I gotta tell you, you know, I've been I've been married a long time, right? I've been. Can I, I'm gonna say something. Don't get upset, ladies. Don't get upset. But this is the truth. Okay. The longer we guys are married, the dumber we get. Every, yes. Every year we go. Every year, right? I. I that's not fun. I'm, I'm being honest, okay? Because after a couple of years, guys, after a couple of years, you can't even answer a simple question. But she, control, she controls everything. You, you can't answer. You're scared, right? She'll come in the room. Are you wearing that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What I used to be able to dress myself, right? And, and they, oh my, and I tell, you know what I tell? I tell the youngsters. I, oh, you should see. You should see the couples I run into. I, okay, I do a lot of the cruises. Oh, okay, okay. Look, I do a lot of the cruises. And, and there's a lot of couples. Like, there'll be the newbie couples, you know, because there's always those. And those ships are huge, 3,000 people. And I'll run into the same couple everywhere I go. Hey, what's up? And there they are. Everywhere I go, I could open my, my, my closet. What's up, dude? Anyway, so, <laughs> and it's that, and it's, it was a newlywed. Oh, the newlyweds. Oh, make me sick, the newlyweds. Every two seconds, whatever you want, baby. <laughs> Shut up. Come back in seven years. I don't want to see that, right? <laughs> I don't want to see that. And then, no, this is messed up. No, this is messed up. This is messed up. Listen, listen, true, true, true. So I was doing the show on a cruise ship, and then I, I, I ran into that other couple. You know that other couple? They've been, they've been together forever, forever, right? And, but the romance is gone. It's gone, right? And we were at the coffee spot. I remember it called the International Cafe. And he's yelling at his wife in front of people. And there's a lot of people, okay? The Piazza, everybody's, anyway, he's yelling, hurry up, hurry up. Wait, wait, they're gonna run out of shrimp, hurry up. <laughs> the cruise just started, they're not gonna run out of shrimp, okay? <laughs> and so I'm a New Yorker, so I usually walk, I, I don't really care to get involved, but I don't know, something in me wanted to calm the dude down, right? 
So I felt, I felt bad, bad, bad for the lady, right? So I said, yo, man, why don't you calm down? And then, then I got, I got, he wrapped me, started talking. And I, I couldn't leave. I, you know, that they've been to 65 years. They've been together 65 years. <laughs> and he tells me, he tells me they've always argued and they always argue and they always argue. So I shouldn't have, I'm going to own this. I shouldn't have said it, but I said it. I said, then why'd you marry her? Oh man. And then, and then he answered, he answered me. He said, so other men wouldn't suffer. Oh my wow. <laughs> and then he got super heated and he threw an old school term at her. He looked at her, listen to me. He looked at her and he said it loud. He said, put it in second gear. Put it in second gear. <laughs> How embarrassing. And she got in her scooter and <laughs> put it in second gear. She put it in second gear. She got a full charge. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> Oh, this whole thing with this. And by the way, let me say, listen, I'm going to say this, okay? When you're, when you're dating, this is true, ladies. When, when we guys, when we're dating you, we buy you nice stuff, you buy us nicer stuff. When we're, da when we're dating, when we're dating. But when we get married, it changes. Isn't that right, ladies? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get yourself nice stuff for yourself. And everything, everything for the husband on sale, on sale, on sale, on sale, everything on sale, right? <laughs> This, my wife bought me some stuff at the outlet mall. That's the stuff that didn't sell at the regular mall. Nobody wanted it. <laughs> Step away from the trash. No, yeah, get it for him. Get it for him. You know? Get it for him. <laughs> Once, I'm telling you, this, she bought me irregular pants. How about that? Irregular pants. Irregular. <laughs> I, that means they can't even sell them at a regular store, right? <laughs> I put the pants. Now, let me tell you. I put, so I put these. I, I, put, I didn't even know they were irregular, so I put them on. One tight leg, one. <laughs> the other one all crooked with the the, the, the the zipper was on the knee. Anyway, so, right? But you ladies, you ladies hook yourselves up. Watch, watch, watch guys, watch, watch the ladies. Watch the married ladies. Watch the married ladies. They hook themselves up. Designer clothes. That's right. Blinged out jewelry. And there's the husband, Kirkland from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> Little Costco action for you, right? Yeah. So a 12, here's a 12 pack of khakis. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, one size fits all. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. This is, I'm losing it. Okay, let's. I got. I gotta go. But let, let you, you. You be the judge of this. Let, I'm. And I, yo, let me tell. Let me tell you something, ladies. Okay, because Mother's Day passed. Not Father's Day coming up. Okay, and nobody cares about Father's Day. Look in, <laughs> you, you know, it, look in your calendar. Some phones you can't find Father's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day, you can't even get to a restaurant. Everybody's on the roof. We can't get in. It's Mother's Day. Father's Day is dead. Nobody cares, right? So, in fact, Mother's Day, your commercials are awesome. Lady. Get her jewelry. Get her this. Get I saw a commercial, and you know this commercial. They're still showing it now. It's an SUV coming down Times Square, and the voiceover, if you love your mom, get her a Range Rover. We don't get commercials like that, guys. We get ads in the newspaper. Paint on sale for dad's big day. <laughs> <laughs> Ladders on sale for dad's big day. Ooh, all right. There's, there used to be, I'll tell you what, there used to be, oh my goodness, there used to be, and by the way, the Mother's Day cards, you, you can't, there's a, thousands of options for Mother's Day cards, thousands mm -hmm. of aisles. Go on, go for Father's Day, a little end cap with a couple of products, <laughs> right? We got to share it with, for dads and grads. We got to share the section. Anyway, so it's sad. But this, this I'm telling you, this, and they, so I remember a commercial. This is, this is true, 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 okay? It was a, they don't show it anymore. It was a Father's Day commercial. Little girl on her mom's lap. Because I want to get that, that some pants. I want to get him a shirt. I want to get him a watch. And the mom says, we better go to Ross. To Ross. Ross. The swap meet of stores, right? Yeah. What's their what's their lingo? Dress for less. Isn't that their their motto? <laughs> Dress for less. Yeah, we'll go to Ross because dad deserves something that's been discontinued. That's <laughs> we'll get him some Sergio Valenta jeans from the 80s and we'll throw in a blockbuster gift card. Yeah, blockbuster gift card okay? Oh, it's something else. Look, okay, so when you ladies are expecting. We're freaking out, but we don't say anything to you because, you know, we don't want to get you, you know, but we're, we're freaking out, okay? First baby, I was wrecked. Second baby, I go, I better calm down. And my wife didn't have cravings first baby. Second baby, she'd make me get up in the morning. 
like two in the morning, three in the morning to get her food. I go, there's food in the kitchen. And she'd point to her, the, her stomach, do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. <laughs> so, so I go to the drive-thru. They'll stay with me. This, this is why I remember the story. I go to the drive-thru. Listen, listen, listen. True, true, true. Okay. So I'm a, and I, I live in LA now, right? So um, this is why I remember that story. My uncle was visiting me from Puerto Rico. Just listen, okay? We go to the drive-thru and the guy comes on. He goes, uh, you want to super, you, you supersize that? And I'm like, no, bro, just... Then we go, it's 39 cents. I go, yeah, I don't want it. He goes, what, you can't afford it? Anyway, so whatever. Okay, so. <laughs> and it was, it was, no, listen, listen. It's a Taco Bell. So at the time, at the time, Taco Bell used to serve something called the gordita. Do you know what gordita literally means in Spanish? It means chubby, chubby gal. Oh, I got some Filipinos in the hizzy. All right, so. so now... So gordita, it means chubby gal. Now, listen, my uncle's from Puerto Rico. He don't know that's a, a Mexican slang for food. And the guy comes on, can I interest you in one of our gorditas? <laughs> <laughs> my uncle tripped out, right? <laughs> and before I could tell him, he, he looks at me and goes, is she cute? <laughs> yes. So now, oh my goodness, and we get to, now here's the, I'm, let me tell you something, okay? And my, my wife uh, is, uh, you know, the, the, can I tell you ladies something? Can, I'm going to ask you, ladies, when you're upset at us, can you just tell us? Because we, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to find out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. You're upset at your friends, you're upset, or, or you're, if you're upset at us, I should say, when you're upset at us, you tell everybody, everyone on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> right? We don't know. We're blocked. We don't know, right? Anyway, so <laughs> we ask you why you're upset. You tell us. Why didn't you tell me? I shouldn't have to tell you. I shouldn't have to. Well, well how am I going to know? It's too late now, right? <laughs> it's, ladies, that's too late. That's like honking the horn after an accident. Too late. Right? <laughs> you don't crash and then hit the horn. <laughs> too late. You got the airbag on your face. The cop is there. <laughs> what happened, ma'am? I shouldn't have to tell you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me, let me, okay, let me, let me even this up. Let me even this up, okay? You lady, I'm going to ask you these, all women at my house, do you women, I'm going to ask you, do you women ever relax, ever relax? <laughs> you're always doing something. You know, we can't relax because you're always doing something. I can't, I can't watch a game because she's doing something. I feel guilty. I'll go work on the roof. All right, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, now listen, I'm a good husband. My, my <laughs> wife was the team mom. Cause you, you ladies are always doing something. She was a team mom and she would take the, my daughter saw the softball games. Anyway, so I bought her, listen, it's back in the day. I bought her uh, an awesome, it was, uh, it was uh, the Suburban, but it was hooked up. I paid crazy money for that. And I even had to pay, listen to me, $3,000 extra for the tech package, the tech package, right? Which is on our phones are free now. Anyway, so my wife said, what's, what's that for? I go, well, that's a tech package. Cause you're always on the go. It tells you just put the address and it takes you there. And she and she turned it off. She she turned it off. I said, "Why'd you turn off?" She goes, "I know where I'm going. I'm not like you." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huh? You, you, you right. You do something for somebody. That's how you get hit in the face, right? And let, no, don't laugh, ladies. Don't they, don't laugh, ladies. Let me tell you something, ladies. I love the tech. I love the tech package. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Cause the lady in there, the lady in there, she's very nice. <laughs> she, when you mess up all she says is recalculating that's all she says <laughs> she doesn't say you're an idiot i shouldn't have married you <laughs> recalculating i'm t i get listen to me i get lost on purpose for the respect, for the respect. <laughs> listen guys i gotta go god bless you guys thank you guys for hanging out with us see you on the next one all right carlos oscar everybody carlos oscar fantastic well how about one more round of applause we have carlos oscar moody mccarthy we have mary gallagher and kat alvarado so one more round of applause Thank you guys for sharing your time and talent for uh, such a great uh, group of people. And uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'll throw it back to you, Patricia, if, if you have any closing remarks. But uh, yeah. this is a, oh, real quick, I just wanted to say that um, the, the Love and Laughter program that we've been doing for a long time now, probably like eight years, we do it at all the locations and it's just one of the many really cool free programs that they offer. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, Patricia. Yeah, and Jason, you're amazing. I, my 
I can't stop smiling. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for finding amazingly funny comedians. Um, Kat, Mary, Moody, and Carlos, thank you for donating your time. If you guys aren't familiar with Jason Love, what a guy to do this for cancer support communities all over, and it's all done free of charge. So thank you.